Hi everybody, it's Mia with Chalk with Mia. I am here today doing a project. I'm probably on a couple of minutes earlier than I said, so I'm gonna give it a couple seconds here, um, and I'm gonna post a picture of the project, I think. Oh, no, nope, can't do that yet. I will do the, hey, Christy Lynn. Um, I am doing the do not give up, do not give up, <laughs> um, which is our October Club Couture. Um, so it is not available, hey Bobette, it is not available to the public until October, but as independent designers, we get them a little early. So um, this is kind of a last second thought of going live. I am actually, um, in my craft room most of the day because, hey Dax, yay! Um, most of the day because I actually have my first um, craft fair type of thing I'm going to next weekend and I realized I need to pump up my inventory a little bit. So I am chalking a lot today and I thought maybe I could have you guys join in on one of the pieces that I could do, um, something that's fairly quick. Uh, but just to give you guys while we're waiting, yeah, I do too, Christy Lynn. It's a lot of fun. Um, so in order, um, while we're waiting for a few people to join us and say hi if you do, I'll show you some of the stuff that I've been doing today. So like this is awesome. I got this bag. Actually, one of our um, designers posted this online and I saw it. Hey, Avis! And I fell in love with it. So this is the do not give up as well or do not give up. Um, as well. And this is just a bag from the dollar store. Um, and so I just thought it was super cute and I inked it. So you can see there's no smudging. Um, that is super cute. I also have, um, I'm just looking around trying, trying to see what I have, but I'll show you guys a couple of projects maybe at the end. Um, so if you guys have any questions whatsoever about Chalk Couture or um, what I'm doing or anything like that, please do not hesitate to ask. I will do my best to answer. I love all the heart stacks. Thank you and Christy Lynn and other people. Thank you so much. Um, if you can like and share, that would be even more fabulous. Okay, so I'm trying to do this so you guys can also see the project. So, um, for anybody that's not familiar with Chalk Couture, it is, hi Laura, how are you? Um, it is a screen mesh transfer, okay? So you can see it's not a transfer like a typical transfer you get in the store. There's a screen mesh inside of ours which helps give it a nice, clean, crisp transfer onto your project and um, it makes it kind of easy peasy, not a whole lot of work. So. Um, Oh, thanks, Dax. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Um, so, you know, I, I just love it. So I, I have no problems, and it does not feel like a job at all to sit in my craft room and craft all day long, to be honest with you. All right, so what we're going to do is I've got this cute little easel board that I got from one of the big um, big stores that we all love that sounds like Target in the dollar spot and I got two of them and because um, school is getting ready to start I thought um, thank you Laura I appreciate it um, yeah, so it was kind of funny you're reading my mind so I got this at the dollar bin or they call it the dollar bin but it ranges from like a dollar to five dollars at, at a place that sounds like Target and it is a chalkboard easel. I got two of them. I don't know if they still have them, but they were there a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I just thought it was super cute, especially with school starting. And um, with this fair, it's going to actually be at a school. So I thought I would do a few little inspirational pieces that the teachers could use in their um, in their classrooms. So the first thing that we want to do, because it is not a chalk couture um, board that I bought from Chalk Couture. Sorry, I don't, hey Andrea. So I don't have um, my little helper here. So I'm trying to go through the comments as well. Yay, Christy Lynn, yeah. So they are awesome. Um, all, my, all my faves are on today with me. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited. So what I wanna do is just uh, wax the board a little bit, and I probably put a little bit too much on here to be honest with you. You just need a little dabble, do ya? And do it just like um, you're waxing your car. 
you put some on and then you buff some off. So that's why I'm rotating around this cloth is to get to a nice clean area that does not have the wax on it. Now, a lot of people use a lot of different waxes. Some people use the Min Wax. Chalk Couture has a wax, um, but it's sold in like little chapstick size containers. I prefer the Dixie Belle Besting Wax, and it's clear. It looks white. Sorry, I'll open this up so you guys can see it. It exploded on me last night. I accidentally left it in my car all day yesterday, so it looks really gunky. But it looks white. But it's not it's it's actually clear and the reason I like it is because it kind of that uh, slick coating that it gives kind of stays on there a little bit and you can think of waxing your boards the reason we do it is kind of like priming your walls if you've ever um, oh thank you Andrew you're so sweet um, my six-year-old oh <laughs> No problem, Bubba. We love Dax. It's good. Um, yes, Kristen, it is awesome. Um, Dixie Bell, if you type in Dixie Bell Paint Company, www Dixie Bell Paint Company, do not type in DixieBell.com. It is not a nice site. <laughs> um, but Dixie Bell Paint Company, if you type that in and you locate it, they're just like us. They're a direct sales company. Um, and so you type in your zip code and you can find a rep near you. Um, but I love this stuff because it doesn't yellow over time. I found that my min wax on some surfaces would start to yellow, especially woods and stuff would start to yellow over time. So um, I, I get, um, hey Janet, I get it from a local rep. She and I actually do classes together and a whole bunch of stuff. She's fantastic. Um, have fun, Bobette. Okay, so I have waxed my surface. And now I want to, got all my little stencils here on the side. So this says, do not give up. So do not give up. I am going to, because this is kind of a small board and it's gonna be hard, I'm kind of hoping everything, everything fits on here, to be honest. Um, I'm gonna do this at an angle. So that way, it hopefully will fit the donut on here. And I just thought this would be super cute for a classroom or, you know, something um, for a teacher or maybe even at home, you know, to put in your kids' bedrooms or, or whatever. I love you, Dax. <laughs> Have fun playing your video game and be good to mommy and daddy, okay? You're such a good boy. I know you will. <laughs> All right. Hey, Janet. I'm also working on a project with Janet. She has got, she's a local friend. She has got an eye for things and she will bring them to my house and be like, hey, I think you could do this with this transfer. And I just love it. She's kind of like a design consultant for me. <laughs> um, all right, I'm surrounded by good people, I tell you. All right, so I am just using, I was trying to find colors that would kind of match the red. Um, a little bit. So I'm using the cherry blossom because it's a pink color. I know it doesn't match completely pink and red, but hey, we're, we're going to go for it. All right. So what we do first, of course, is we put the transfer down and we, I'm using my finger, but you can use a squeegee. You want, ooh, you want to get all of the bubbles out. And the reason for that is, is if you don't, um, it kind of takes away from the whole point of having the screen mesh because the paint can then, hey Krista, how are you? Um, uh, so yeah, so you can, um, so it, it takes away from the part of it having a screen mesh because the paint can bubble up underneath and you don't want that. So if you get all the bubbles out, it gives a nice clean transfer. And I realized I was not, I didn't finish what I was saying earlier. Sorry, a little like squirrel. Um, so, what happens with the wax is you want to put it on your board. Think of it like priming walls, okay? Have you ever painted a wall and you haven't primed it? It takes extra coats. It sometimes doesn't go on as clean. It doesn't stay as long, that sort of a thing. The wax does the same surface for, um, or does the same type of coating for our surfaces. It gives the paste something to stick to, and it does it in more in a cleaner way, and it stays a little bit longer. So it's kind of giving us that little buffer between, um, between everything. Okay. All right, so I've got this down, and I think I've got all the air bubbles out. I'm just using my finger because it's a small transfer, and that way I can feel anything. So I'm going to dip my squeegee in my paste, 
And I'm not too worried about how much I take out because I'm going to take all the excess and put it right back in my container, which is fantastic. That way we do, don't lose, um, uh, we don't lose any, um, any paste. And Janet, you're right. If I don't like the cherry blossom, it's just chalk and I can erase it and redo it. That's the great thing about our chalk paste is you can, it's water soluble. So you can just, um, get rid of it and start all over. Not that you want to have to do that, but it is an option. So we go on here and we do it just like our mentor Trina says, you butter it like you're buttering bread. And we make sure we cover all of the areas that I'm seeing that are black because that's the part that's the transfer that's going to go through, not the green part, but the part that I say black because that's what my surface is. Whatever color your surface is, that's what's going to pop through. So I put it on and then I do like a bulldozer and I scrape it off. And I'm going to show you guys this, how much of a light film it really takes. So can you guys see that? It really doesn't take much. I can see what it's red right underneath it. And then what we want to do is just pull it off. Ah, and look, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet my transfer a little bit because we don't, because it's chalk, oops, sorry, you guys can't see that. Because it's chalk based, it will dry fairly quickly. So I just squirted some water and I've got this napkin and I'm just rubbing the chalk off of my transfer because I need to use the bottom section and I don't want the chalk paste to dry um, on my transfer. I mean, it'll ultimately clean up, but it just makes life a little bit easier if I do it now. Okay. Since I'm going to continue to use it, if not, I've got a tin, you know, one of those uh, foil kitchen like catering tins that you can get at the dollar store, full of water. And normally, if I'm done with the transfer, I'll just throw it right in that tin and we're done. Okay, so now, oops, I got a little bit of paste down here. All right, so now I need to figure out how I can get the, oh, let me blow dry this because it is a little wet, so I'm going to blow dry it. Okay, I do that because I don't want, um, when I lay the transfer back down, there's gonna be a little bit on top. I don't want it to pull that paste up. Another thing that people do is they'll take some of the backing that the transfers come on and cover that up so that we don't get, so that the backing sticks to this and not um, the letters, if that makes sense. Do I use wax on erase boards? Too? Are you talking about like dry erase boards? Um, no, I have. And it depends, and that's why I like the Dixie Bell wax because it's clear. So I have done it, but you don't, if it's a pretty slick surface, you don't really need to. Just make sure that you defuzz your transfers as much as you can. And defuzzing is some people have a towel. Um, I use my shirt a lot. And what it does is it takes a little bit of that stickiness off of the back because you, if, if it's too sticky and you put it on something that has not been waxed, and you go to lift it, some of this green is gonna to transfer to that board or that material, whatever you're using. Um, and don't be scared, when we, when we clean these at the end, we take some disinfectant wipes and wipe the front and the back, and there's something in the chemistry of that disinfectant wipe that will add some sticky back to your transfer. So, I, and don't ask me how, I'm not a chemist, I just trust that what they're telling me is true. <laughs> so that's what happens. And you can use these transfers like up to, this. the company says 10 to 12 times. Um, I've seen people use them a lot more, especially if you take care of them. So, um, so that's all goodness. All right, so I'm moving this over as far as I can without going completely off the board to give myself enough room to use the donut because the donut is kind of large and I'm praying that we can do it. And if not, maybe I'll just do a partial donut because you'll get the concept of what it is. Um, and that's what I like about our transfers too, is you don't have to use it exactly how they give it to you. You can use parts of them, you can combine them. I mean, it's pretty amazing all the different choices that you have. Okay, so again, I'm just putting chalk paste, where's my camera? Chalk paste on my squeegee. And you can go up and down, left or right. It doesn't really matter, just as long as you're covering the space. Um, it will work out just fine. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm just scraping all that excess off. And you can see, look at all that excess. It doesn't look like a lot, but that's enough to do a word, you know? So I want to put it right back in there. And then I lift up. I love it. Okay, sorry. I have been doing this in September, and I give the same response every time because I love it so much. So there we are thus far. You guys like it? Okay. Let me make sure I'm getting all the comments. Oh, yeah. I'm Sandra. I bought some of those as well. And, um, they're fabulous. And you know what the great thing is, is if it doesn't work for whatever reason, you can erase it and start all over. Um, I mean, I hate that you waste your pace doing that, but at least you learn. Um, and I think some, uh, boards are better quality than others, but just try it. I've, I've always, um, like I said, I've done it with and without, and I didn't really see much of a, much of a difference. Sorry guys, I have allergies, so I have to scratch my nose a lot. I apologize. Okay. So we're going to dry this. So um, what I will do at the end, um, I will probably, most of the time when I sell my items in a store um, or at a fair, I have sprayed them with polyurethane because I want to keep them um, like this. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate the emojis. Um, so what I do is um, if we spray it with polyurethane, it will keep it, uh, you know, forever, let's say. Um, if I don't spray it, it's not going to smear. Look, I can rub my hands across it. It's not going to smear, but it will, if it gets water on it, it will start to um, erase over time or bleed. And so um, if it's something that's not going to be near water and, you know, the teacher says, hey, don't spray it, just put this on here. And then mid-year, maybe around exams or maybe when summer's here, we'll change it with a summer message or something. And that's the great thing about Chalk Couture is all I have to do is take a wet napkin and clean it up and we're good to go. All right, so we've got two different donut transfers, one with kind of a squiggly edge. The other one is um, more of just a round circle, but I think I wanna use this one. And we are going to figure out, I think I can get it on here. It's gonna be close. Everybody cross your fingers. Oh, we got it. All right, so this is a layered transfer. So you guys will get to see how we do our layers. So I've got this one, okay, and it's just fitting on there. And then what I'm gonna do is we've got two different layers we can put on top. And I'm gonna choose the swirly one. We've got that one, and we've got this one, which is kind of like sprinkles and hurts and stuff. So what we do is we do the base first, we dry it, and then we do the top. So I think I, I'm gonna do because I wanted bright colors, um, and I know the red doesn't really match these colors too much. I don't know. What do you guys think about this? This will be the base, and this will be the swirly on top. What do you think? Good. It'll match the cherry blossom. Give me a thumbs up if you guys like that. We'll see. We'll see if that works. And I'll get my squeegees ready. And while I'm waiting to hear back from you guys, I'll also. Find, look, I did this project earlier. I'll show you guys. Hold on. I gotta navigate my my mess around me. Your know, crafters are not messy at all. So while we're waiting, I did this one earlier today. So much fun. I love this. Um, so that's gonna go to the craft fair with me, and that'll be up for sale. Um, and that's actually a combination of transfers. And I did this one just to show you guys a variety of things you can do. So I got this frame at a thrift store and then I got a chalkboard, uh, what do you call it? Chalkboard contact paper. And I laid it on the top and I did this time, I hadn't done it before, but this time I sprayed a little bit of the Loctite um, adhesive spray on the back to help it go down. And then I cut, these are fonts. This was in a transfer, that word fonts, this was in a transfer, and then this is part of our carnival transfer, and I put the glitter, I don't know if you guys can see the glitter, the little sparklies, on the edges. So this is all the type of stuff that you can do with chalk couture. I mean, the it's really kind of endless. 
all the different things. Sorry, my OCD is kicking in. It's got to be straight. All right, there we go. Okay, so um, that's just a variety of stuff that I've been working on, and all with Chalk Couture products, um, except for uh, some of the frames and stuff. Like I said, I love thrift store shopping, and Chalk Couture has fantastic frames. They really do, and I'm going to use some of them for some of my projects today, but I also like rehabbing things, and so for me, and that's kind of the fun part, too, is finding really fancy, pretty frames. Um, Andrea, I know you do the same thing. If you're still on, um, she does the same thing. It gets to be kind of like an obsession, to be honest with you. But then that way it makes it unique. You know, you have something that you're not going to find anywhere else, which is, which is great. Okay, so, again, I've got my paste. I've got a little bit larger squeegee this time. Um, they come, just so you guys know, they come this size. Then I cut them in half and they get this size and then I cut them in half again and I don't know if I have one that's clean. Oh, and then they get to be like this size. Okay. So depending on the space that you're working with depends on what tool you're going to use. So because this is a big open space, these are the hardest to get all the bubbles out, to be honest, because there is so much open screen. Um, so I'm going to pray. I do feel that there's some gaps, but I'm going to pray that this works. Um, like I said, they do, the, the ones with a lot of screen area are a little bit tougher, certainly doable. And I've seen people do these, um, well then they'll clean off the edge and make it look like a bite has been taken out of it. I love that. And that's the other good thing about chocolate tour. They can go in there and just clean it up at the end and um, do stuff like that. All right, so I'm going to pull this up. I do see a bubble. I'm hoping it worked out okay. Yes. A few little marks, but since I'm going to put the sprinkles on it, I think it'll be just fine. So look. Look at that. Yay. I know it does not match the red, but you know what? I don't care. It is art. <laughs> It matches because I say so. Um, Sandra, my next event um, is in a county called Gates County, and the school is putting it on. It's a big event. Um, they're trying to raise money, I think, for the band, maybe. Um, so I'm doing that, and then I'm doing the Chesapeake Jubilee, which I think is in November, and then Driver Days in October, which is in Suffolk. So they're all in Virginia. <laughs> So I probably could have pulled this donut a little bit to the left, but that's okay. Again, if I really wanted to fix it, all I'd have to do is erase it and redo it, which would take seconds, but I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me too much. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to make sure my, this is buttermilk and I'm going to get my little stir stick here, which is actually just a makeup applicator. And sorry, I need to get my glasses fixed. They keep falling on me. They've like expanded. And so I feel like, like a librarian or, you know, an old person. I actually need to, the other day my husband laughed at me because I took two pieces of fabric and <laughs> tied it to the end and then made my own little like, you know, you like you see basketball players do or whatever. And they have that strap that goes around. And um, so, yeah, so. I had that on the other day and my husband was like, please don't tell me you're leaving the house looking like that. <laughs> I said, actually, I did a live the other day with it on because it helps my glasses. They keep falling down. And you know what? I'm too old to be worried about what people think. All right. So. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So now we are going to put our little squiggly on there. And I just want to make sure that all I see is that hot pink coming through because then I know it's on the donut. I'm not too concerned about it being centered or not because whose donut actually has centered sprinkles and perfectly laid out whatevers. And if you do find that place, let me know because that would be amazing if they took that much care into it. All right. Now, when you layer, I did push down on it, but I don't, I'm hoping I didn't push down too hard. You don't want to push down too hard because even though it is dry, you're putting a sticky surface down on it and it will yank 
some of that pink up and I've had that happen. I think most people have. So if that happens to you, don't fret. It's not because you did something wrong. It's just um, a technique. And so I'm going to pull this up slowly to hopefully, oh, yep. Yeah, see, I pulled up some of the pink, um, but I'll show you how I'm going to fix that. Oh, I pulled up quite a bit, but maybe see how there's some pink missing. It's because it pulled up on my transfer. So what I'm going to do, and that happens, it's not, um, it's hard. I probably should have dried it a little bit more. Probably shouldn't push down on it as hard, but that is okay. This is what I'm going to do to fix it. And there's multiple ways. You can erase it and restart it, you know, just do the project over. Or if you're gutsy enough, you can take a paintbrush and I get it wet. And with our new paste, especially because they're a little bit more liquidy, which is great. I just put it on the tip of my paintbrush and I go over those areas. And it makes it. Um, and then when I spray it with polyurethane, you can't really tell as much that it's been a filled in space. Um, and I'll show this to you guys here in a second. But that's just how I'm choosing to try to quote unquote fix it. Um, but certainly you can, you know, erase it and start over. That's fine too. Again, I want to put some water on the brush one because I don't want to waste too much paste. The water actually kind of helps do some of the absorbing into the brush bristles instead of my paste being absorbed into the bristles. And it helps uh, smear it just a little bit more because we are working with paste and not paint, okay? Um, in fact, my mother is an artist and she came over one day and was doing something with me and she tried to use it like watercolors or acrylic paints and I'm like, you can't do that. It doesn't move just like that. You gotta water it down or, you know, something else. So just be aware it's not going to, you know, move like that. Okay, I'm almost done with this top part. And then I'll dry it and you guys can see. It does show a little bit of a difference, but again, when I polyurethane it, it will be fine. The bottom part really picked up quite a bit. And again, it's because I was talking and I wasn't really paying attention and I knew that I pressed too hard. As soon as I did it, I kind of knew it. Um, I was hoping that wasn't going to be the outcome, but I've done enough of these to know that that's what was going to happen. Make sure I don't have any questions. So does anybody have any questions or anything? Um, I'm happy to answer them as we sit here and you guys just kind of watch me. Uh, what's the guy's name who, I, I mentioned him all the time, we're going to have a little bit of pretty trees over here. Make some beautiful little mountains over here. That's what I feel like when I always do these little fixy areas. I feel like that guy. Bob. Let's see Bob. What's his name? I can't remember his name. And somebody always has to remind me. It's one of those things that I don't know if I'll ever remember his name. It's like no matter how many times I ask people, they can't. I can't seem to remember. This is a shame because he was a great PBS painter. <laughs> he was on the PBS show. I used to watch him in the mornings. Okay, just a little bit more. And, you know, getting water into my paste container is not a bad thing, at least in the amount that I'm doing with this paintbrush when I dab it in the water and then into the paste. It just helps keep it... Uh, the moisture in there too so it's not a bad thing if you do that so no worries there all right people i think i'm close to getting this done just fill in a few more little spots Thank you. 
Okay. So it's a little wet. Let me dry it and see if that helps it out a little bit. Now I'm going to do another layer after this, but this way you guys can see it. There we go. And you can see where it's a little wet. See those little areas that are wet? I'll go back and clean those up just a little bit more, and they'll be they'll look a little better. They're a little smudgy right now because they're still slightly wet. You can see the darker areas. But this is my project for today. I have loved showing you guys. And again, if you have any questions about Chalk Couture, or um, anything really um, that relates to chalk couture. I don't think I'll tell you everything about myself, but <laughs> maybe. Uh, but anyways, I love chalk couture. I love the products. This is just my cute little inspirational for a teacher's room or a kid's room or what have you. Um, super easy, super quick, and there you go. All right, so please feel free to visit my Facebook site, or you're on it now, but I also have a VIP page. Anybody who is not a designer who would like to um, join my VIP, you can do that. I believe it's under my groups, um, Chalk With Me uh, uh, VIP. And um, sometimes I offer deals and bundles and that sort of thing. So I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. And uh, please feel free. Bob Ross, thank you, Laura. I just saw that. Hey, Becky. Um, so thank you so much. It says, when you do cloth, why do you have to iron the back like the pillowcases after you ink it? I understand the front. I don't know. The only thing I can assume is, it's, I, I don't know, maybe it's just part of the heat sealing. That is a really great question. I do know that a lot of embroidery places and t-shirt makers have these machines that come down and it's like a pan and it does heat the top and the bottom. So maybe they're just mimicking what t-shirt makers do. I don't know. I will Google that though, because that's a good question. I don't know. I just do it because they say to do it. That's probably really bad, but that's what I've done. Um, Hey, Suzanne, how are you? Are you at Hobby Lobby? Oh my gosh, Suzanne is, uh, there you go. Suzanne, you're an embroidery and a sewer. Why do we heat set the front and the back when we ink something? I don't know. I know you're not a chalk couture person, but maybe you know just in general why, why you do the front and the back. Um, I do want one of those heat setter things that does it automatically for you. Gosh, because four minutes doesn't sound like a long time until you're having to heat set a t-shirt or a pillowcase or something and you've done several of them, you can spend a good afternoon just heat setting those bad boys. Um, okay, so this is my project. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, please. I know, Laura, I hate ironing too. It's such a pain. Um, but you end up with such a cute project at the end. So I get it. Maybe if we, maybe if we sell enough chalk couture, we can afford one of those heat setters. I think Cricut has one. Um, for people who have Cricut machines. Uh, yeah, I'm right there with you, girl. Um, all right. I think I'm going to go, unless you guys have any other questions. I truly appreciate you joining me on this Saturday afternoon on a holiday weekend. I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend and be safe and, uh, yeah, be nice to each other and <laughs> have a good time. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.